So good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Monday. And this is Business as Usual. I'm Audrey Russo, President and CEO of the Pittsburgh Technology Council, and joined with us each and every day is Jonathan Kirsting. He's Vice President of All Things Media. He is going to keep his eye on the chat and jump in. And I want to give a thank you to Huntington Bank for their sponsorship with us right from the beginning of uh, this journey of COVID. And here we are a year later. You might want to join us later this week when we have Susie Shipley, who actually is the president of this region on our show, talking about what's ahead, not necessarily what's behind us. So we're sort of excited about that and thanking Huntington Bank as well as 40 by 80. That's a wholly owned subsidiary of the Pittsburgh Tech Council. And that's where we focus on all things that are related to talent and pipeline development. Soon you're gonna hear about an apprenticeship program in tech, uh, as well as our work on entrepreneurship. So a couple of things, we've muted your mics and we've allowed for you to have a chat. The chat is not for you to shine the light on your company or sell, sell anything. It's really our focus on our guests today. And our guests today, it's great on this day as we break into spring to think about our friends who have joined us today. And that is Eric McElhone and Jerry Tagger. And they are going to talk about their business over at Seven Springs. So we're pretty excited about that. So welcome, Eric and Jerry. Thank you for joining Thank us you. today. And I know there are things going on there all year long, but first let's talk about fun. Your team just informed us that you would like to help a few of our members enjoy access to Seven Springs. And we'll talk about Seven Springs in a second, but tell us about what you're gonna be doing and what you're giving away. So we have three things that we're gonna be giving away today. Um, since golf season is upon us, we are gonna be opening our golf course this week, actually on uh, April 1st. So uh, one of the items would be a foursome at Seven Springs Golf Course. Um, nice. Another another upcoming um, activity that we're going to be offering after Memorial Day is our summer adventure passes. So we're going to offer four of those as well. So that, that way you can come with some friends or your family. Oh, that's nice. And then the last one is an overnight stay. So you can come and enjoy a stay at the resort and, uh, and enjoy our breakfast buffet in Slopeside that's, that's that we're famously known for on the weekends. That's great. So we'll do that at the end of the show. So th thank you. Thank you for sharing that. That's a lot of fun. Appreciate that. So, and I guess, how are we going to run that, Jonathan? How, is that Ashley going to be on top of that one? We're going to ask, we're gonna ask everybody who's interested to put their name and their company name in the chat. And then we're going to randomly draw the winners at the end. We'll announce them. So. Ah, okay. So Taylor will be behind the scenes as I show you every name on my team, but she will be behind the scenes. Excellent. So let's let's talk about let's talk about Seven Springs a little bit. What tell us about it. I mean, many people know and are familiar, but you know, it's always good to sort of state what are your offerings, how big well it's activities. Yeah. So uh something that people don't realize people always just think of skiing when you think of Seven Springs just because of the long history here. But there's over 400 hotel rooms here, over 1,200 condos on property, chalets, cottages, cabins. Um, we have a large convention center here as well um, that, you know, in a normal scenario, we do hold conventions here all throughout the year. Um, and we also have a big summer adventures program here. So it, you know, and that includes golf, sporting plays, and all the summer adventure activities too. Um, so you have all that going on. Summer has almost become just as busy, if not busier, than ski oh, season good. at times. Um, you know, which a lot of people don't realize. Mm -hmm. But there's, um, you know, that we have a lot of history in Western PA in the Pittsburgh area, where at least I think everybody has heard of Seven Springs to some degree. Mm -hmm. And Seven Springs is located how many miles from downtown Pittsburgh? Uh, we're just about probably 50 miles. Okay. Uh, pretty easy to get to because uh, from either direction, we're pretty easy to get to because you can get off the turnpike either Donegal when you're coming from the west or Somerset coming from the east. 
and then it's a short drive up to the resort either way. And so, so most people that, what's the demographics? Do most people come from Southwestern Pennsylvania or don't people come from all over to go to Seven Springs? I think they come from all over. Certainly Western Pennsylvania and the Pittsburgh metro area is a major market for us, particularly group wise. Um, but we also see uh, you know, a fair amount of group business coming from the DC, Maryland, Virginia area. Um, which is, uh, you know, a big market down there. And again, very easy to get to. We do a lot of work with state associations on the group side. So we're, okay. uh, we're pulling people from across the state regularly, um, other than last year. Um, so that, that's a good piece for us. Uh, and then Ohio, the Cleveland market, and, you know, is, is not that far away. It's kind of a three-hour drive similar to the D.C., Maryland, Virginia market. So when people think about you, you do conventions, you do business meetings, what size, how big? I mean, before pandemic, right? Uh, we do everything from, you know, a small board meeting of uh, five to 10 people okay. um, up to, we have one group that comes annually now in, uh, in every July that uh, buys us out basically for eight days and they come and, uh, it, it's called the World Board Gaming Association. They actually come and play board games around the clock, which is a unique group. But that group, uh, you know, we have a couple thousand people here every day with that group. Uh, so we really have a variety of groups that come in. Well, Jonathan and I might want to go to that one, Jonathan. It's, board games? How do we get? I'll bring get my bicycle. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll put you in touch with them. They've. Uh, they're a very unique group. And it's funny because they're a group, you would think it's, you know, a group of uh, interesting people, which it is, you know, it's anyone from, you know, a, a young, young teenager playing board games instead of video games up to, we have a couple CEOs that we won't use their names of, uh, that are uh, billionaires, basically. Uh, well, I, I want to know more about this. So we're going to talk to you offline. Jonathan and I are going to go down there. Yes. We're on assignment right now. Let's go. <laughs> You're totally in for that. That's great. So you have a lot of amenities. How many acres is Seven Springs? Uh, five, around 5,000 5, acres. 5,500 5, acres. 5,500 acres. Okay. Yep. That, that's pretty massive. So there's everything there for the summer. If we wanted to come out in the summer, and I know we're going to talk about the pond skim, right? Is that a summer activity, the pond skim? Yeah, the, the pond skim is a end of, win, end of winter celebration, so to speak, of the end of, end of the ski oh. season, where uh, we build two ponds on the bottom of a slope and uh, people register. Uh, we have an online registration for it and you get a time and your, your goal is to try to ski or snowboard across those two ponds. And a lot of a lot of people will wear costumes and different outfits and things, or try to do a flip in between the two ponds. Yeah. Just a, it's a really fun time. This year's a little bit different, obviously, with everything going on. So we have you have to pre-register. When um, is it? when is it? It is April tenth. April tenth, Jonathan. That's another thing for us to go down to see. We have a trip. Yeah. We got to plan it right now, Audrey. We got to plan. Now. We got to plan these. So April tenth, is there still room for people to register? Uh, the, the actual event itself is sold out for participants. For you guys, though, however, if you would like to do it, we'll make sure you get in. <laughs> but there are still. Okay, spectators. you heard it here, Jonathan. You heard it here. Let's look at our calendars for April tenth. Love it. And then we can drag Brian with his broken foot right behind us. And, uh, you know, he can really add value to the pond skim. So th that's just way fun. That's really cool. So what if we were to come for a summer, if people are thinking about the summer, what are some of the things that that people should understand that you offer? Because it surprises them that it's not the winter and it's skiing. Well, uh, something that's really popular and that we're giving away today is the is that summer adventure pass. Um, so that's really popular with families. If you're looking to get away with your family for mm -hmm. a couple nights, uh, we're a nice, easy drive away where you can get here, spend the weekend, 
we have a lot of great packages too that will include you know, the breakfast buffet, the adventure passes, some of those things. So it's kind of, you're taken care of That's in nice. that regard. But th those adventure passes um, are great because it gives you the ability to, you don't have to make a reservation. You can just go and do whatever you'd like throughout the day. And it's climbing wall, alpine nice. slide, scenic chairlifts, um, our alpine tower, swimming, bowling, mini golf, disc golf, um, kind of you name it with those activities. And what's nice is, you know, if, if you enjoy doing the alpine slide and want to do it again, you can just go oh, and do nice. it again. Okay. And so you can do, do things as many times as you'd like. And then you can't forget um, our golf sporting clays is our sporting clays facility is the best in the region. Um, One of the top in the country. So yes. if, if people bring and, their kids, what about that? If people bring their kids. Do you have childcare? Do you have, how does that work? Well, typically we do offer it, but at the moment, yeah. because of COVID, right. we uh, had, had to spend it. So for this summer, we couldn't promise okay. that right now. <laughs> so the governor works with us a little more. Um, but yes, but I'll tell you, most families don't come up to, you know, use childcare. They come up to spend time with their kids doing things they can do together. Um, that's one of the neat things about Seven Springs. They can all do these things So together. I guess that was a little Freudian slip on my end, so you know what kind of parent I am. So uh, We'll make sure your kids are taken care of. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, watch your, we'll watch your kids while you're, in the, you're at the spa, Trillium Spa. Okay, okay, well, uh, that, that does sound phenomenal and you're really close, but let's talk a little bit how has the pandemic impacted you? I mean, I can imagine, but what does that mean? And what do you think, what's changed over the years? And what do you think about moving forward? Uh, that, <laughs> that's a loaded question. Uh, obviously the pandemic, it, it, well, our industry, the, the hospitality industry took a beating, obviously uh, everywhere in Pittsburgh, all, all of the us. World. We're all kind of, yeah, we're all kind of in the same boat. What it's really done, other than, you know, we, we tr lost a tremendous amount of business mm -hmm. that we had. Um, what it's done, though, is kind of fundamentally changing the way we're going to move forward, which is not necessarily a bad thing at some point. Um, but I think it's, you know, reset things on the hospitality, hotel, restaurant mm -hmm. world as to what used to be, you know, customer service is extremely important. Um, that's what we all strive for is the best we can provide. But now cleanliness, hygiene, you know, all those things that come into play when that you think about with spas and doctor's office, that kind of thing has entered our world. So that we anticipate moving forward will not change. Um, we'll have to incorporate that into our, you know, our typical routines for all groups, weddings, uh, receptions, meetings, that sort of thing. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, it's interesting to see how different places, different states are reacting. And uh, I think for sure, this is going to be, people want to come back though. Are you, are you attracting oh, people? Do. Have you attracted people who are actually uh, working from Seven Springs for a little bit? Working we, a little them? bit, yeah. You know, it's unique. It's kind of funny you asked that. And so this winter, our ski business was, extremely good for a couple of reasons. One, the best regular snow winter in probably 20 years, of course, during a pandemic. Um, but a lot of people just wanted to get out, wanted to get out of the house and go do something, particularly outside. We saw a lot of skiers come back to the ski business that haven't skied in 20 years or 15 years. So they kind of got their you could tell some of them by their outfits. Uh, you could tell some by their skis. Uh, I could have been one of them. So, uh, but it was really fun to see them get back out and enjoy a sport they, you know, loved a, a while ago. Wait a second. What about their outfits? Oh, I don't know if you were, just Google uh, the '70s one-piece ski outfits. <laughs> Yeah, and if you have one of those, let us know and send us a picture. <laughs> I think I have one with little straps. Oh, everything, bright <laughs> colors. John Keller's is key. 
well, yeah. I mean, come on, you know, at least they're reusing it in this day and age with sustainability and, you know, closed loop sustainability. I think that's a good thing, right? I, you know, I think it's starting a new trend. We'll see what happens next year with, uh, with the, with the uh, ski industry. So do you have an Instagram account? We do, yes. You do? So there's probably some cool pictures that are out there. Yes, Abby, oh, yeah. Abby Way is in charge of our uh, social and she does a great job. Uh, a lot of people think she might have the best job here yeah. in the winter time because you'll see on her Instagram, she's out on the slope snowboarding uh, daily almost to give people a you know, real life experience of what it's like out on the slopes. So she does a great job of getting out there every day to show people what the conditions are like and, and to go over all the terrain that's open as well for people. So I wonder if we can volunteer Jonathan Kirsten to do that for cycling there. Absolutely. Sure, certainly. And everybody take a look at the Instagram account. Yeah, we had a really cool thing happen this year. We had a snowy, great snowy white owl come and visit our slopes the last month, like regularly, people would send pictures in of it. And we were actually skiing, Eric and I, we did that every once in a while this winter. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and the owl was just sitting there on the snow below the chairlift. It almost looked like it was fake, but it wasn't. Uh, so it was really cool to have that kind of thing happen. Well, I'm getting notes from my team saying they'll all volunteer for any of the services if they can come down and help you with your Instagram account. So that could be spa, restaurants, et cetera. Careful so we're all happy to come down there and, and hang out for the day. I think the entire PTC team needs to come down here for, for a night or two. Now you're talking. This, oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. How about that? We all go down there. That sounds great. All right. We will take that under advisement. So what does it look like right now from a workforce perspective are you back to you know full capacity you talked about the hospitality industry we know everyone's been hit so when people come tell us what kinds of precautions you know have been implemented and are you at 75 percent capacity now are you up to that we are in the in the restaurants um and for private events, which, um, you know, is like the biggest hit, we're at 25% occupancy for indoor spaces. Okay. So that makes, you know, that makes it tough to, for any of the, some of the group events that we're working through. Right. Um, but we had to put, uh, we have a, a link on our website called Clean and Safe, where it pretty much outlines the entire operational plan for when it comes to the hotel rooms, to okay. restaurants, to skiing, to golfing, to sporting clays. Each, each section uh, of the resort has its own plan in place so that guests can see and know when they look online, when they're looking to book here, that they can be comfortable and what the expectations are for um, our COVID plan here at the resort. Mm -hmm. Okay, so has, what have you learned though? You probably have learned some really great things over this last year that you have, are there particular activities that people have been more interested in? What are, what are some of the things that you've learned that you think is gonna take you into hopefully post pandemic days? Well, I think one kind of really unique thing. So last summer, normally our summer business is geared around our groups, weddings, reunions, oh, okay. corporate, you know, and some really large groups. And most of them, if not all, had to cancel last year or change their dates, obviously, because of what was going on. But what we found was a lot of people, we were pretty well filled on weekends because a lot of people came in what's called a transient business, meaning just you bringing your family up or you getting away. Mm -hmm. Something that I think, like Eric mentioned earlier, people don't realize what's here in the summer. And all of a sudden, now they got out, they came to the mountains. And they found out all these things to do, the hiking, the biking, the fishing, the sporting clays, mm -hmm. uh, even being in the area close to Flight 93 in Ohio pile and, you know, falling water, just things that people, I think, didn't really or took for granted and didn't realize that it was all here. Uh, so it was kind of neat to get that vacation type business kind of built in. And now if we can hopefully combine the two, uh, you know, we'll get back to a norm, more normal uh, 
business here by by summertime is our goal. Well, you know, um, John Yoakum asked a question. I was just thinking about the same thing. Is that can you comment at all about this real estate um, quote unquote boom in the Laurel Highlands? Do you know anything about what's mm -hmm. happening? I mean, I know I have a friend who just bought like a little farm out there, and uh, it's it's yeah, it's incredible. We um, it, the only explanation um, you know we kind of can guess at is that people. Uh, you know, are looking for a lot of it's second home, like something they're mm -hmm. going to use um, and get away. Uh, but it's not just that it's in the, I live in the Somerset area, even in the residential, uh, you know, market, it's, there's not much on the market. It doesn't stay. If you put your house on the market, it doesn't stay on the mm -hmm. market long. So it's pretty interesting. And, and if you want to try to get anything done from a contractor, you're, you know, you're looking at six to eight, nine months to get somebody on your on your project, which is interesting. Yeah, that is interesting. I mean, we're yeah. we're experiencing that in the suburbs and parts of the city here in Pittsburgh, but I am seeing like the exurbs, as they're called, people really wanting to be out yeah. there. Here's someone who says they own a house at Seven Springs in Southwind and their property value is way up. He got a call if he would consider selling. That's the same thing that's happening here in the city, too. Yeah. So yeah. really, that's exciting. I mean, it's exciting for us to get some exposure on all the amenities of Southwestern Pennsylvania. That's one of the things when people think about Pittsburgh and relocating here, we have to do a really better job to you know, explaining what right. these amenities are and they're not far and they're really in our backyard. So did we cover everything early when we talked about cycling? You have downhill, right? You've got amazing yeah. trails. I mean, how how, you know, long are these trails and, and can you describe them a little bit? I know, Jonathan, you've probably been on every trail out there. I knew them all and I knew them well. <laughs> right. So, so can you tell us, Eric and Jerry and Jonathan pipe in on the trails, on the bike trails in particular? Yes, yes. there's uh, we have a great section of, we have the downhill bike course here, um, which you get a chairlift pass, there's season passes for that. You can get a daily lift ticket to, in order to access the chairlift for that. Uh, but we also have cross country trails here too that um, are on top of the mountain that you know, are really beautiful. I, I like to spend time on those trails, either hiking by, or running or biking. And I mean, you can go on a section of trail, you're on top of the mountain and, it, and one uh, Chestnut Lake, it leads back to a lake that's on top of the mountain in the middle wow. of the forest. So it's, there's things like that, that um, we have maps and everything online and here available for people too, if they ever want to come down and, and access some of those trails that, and even um, some of the trails on top of the slopes, you know, if you're coming to the mountains, you kind of want that view, the mountain view. So it's very accessible on top of the slopes to be able to have a spectacular view Kind of right at your fingertips at all times while you're here wow. and even on top of the slopes uh there's some great trails but um another significant one is the laurel highlands hiking trail that actually cuts right through the middle of our property and that's a 70 mile trail that goes from johnstown to ohio pile oh, okay. um, hmm. so there's there's some trail there's some trails but um with 5500 acres there's a lot of opportunity here to spread out and get outside and you know be comfortable too. Yeah, Jonathan, do you want to say anything about any of those bike trails? The, the one thing I would add that's really kind of a hidden treasure of Seven Springs in the whole area is that from Seven Springs, you have access to numerous, numerous logging roads and so forth. Um, gravel riding has become very popular in cycling where you're on more of a road bike to ride some of the trails. So you get a, little, get a little bit of ruggedness added with some efficiency of a road bike. And I mean, we do rides that are 60, 70 miles long with you know, seven, 8,000 feet of climbing in them all from Seven Springs. And we talk about getting away from it all. It's a great place to do it. So much fun. Great. That's great. So do you, Jonathan, have you ridden your bike directly from Pittsburgh to Seven Springs? Oh, we've done that too. Absolutely. It's a lot easier to ride to Seven Springs and then get off and start riding from there too. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's great. So see, you got some good advertising from a serious cyclist here. So do you think there's anything else that uh, you want people to know about what's going on? When are you going to be back at some sort of capacity? Are you anticipating anything 
you know, changing over the next month? We're, we're hopeful that, uh, you know, May will bring, you know, kind of the next step forward. We're kind of at the mercy of the guidelines and restrictions that are put out. Um, on our client end, you know, we've got a lot of clients hanging in there through May, starting in May for sure, uh, through the end of the year. Um, so I think there's a big anticipation in the market for things to open back up. And, you know, so we're kind of prepping based on that. But again, we're kind of at the mercy of, uh, you know, where we go state wise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm excited about that whole area, you know, really growing in terms of exposure, marketing, and people understanding how close it is and right in our backyard. I think it's one of the things we just don't do a great job of inclusively branding. So I'm excited about that. So the, the whole PTC team is going to volunteer to come down and help on all different things there. We're excited to do that. And we should, it's about time for us to go down there anyway. Don't you think, Jonathan? Let's go. <laughs> yeah, I think we should go. So I, we do, we did um, our, our um, wizard behind the scenes, Taylor. She has done her magic by these giveaways. So let's hear what they are. We have the first winner is Bill Cross of PC Doctor. Is Bill here? I need Bill to be here. If Bill's not here, I go to the next one. Bill is here. And uh, yes. There you go. We got a yes. And he just won a foursome at Seven Springs Golf Course. Which opens on Friday. All right. It opens on Friday. How about that? Yay, Bill. Congrats, says Jill. Okay, hopefully Bill is happy about that. Hi, Jill. I'm hoping, I'm hoping Bill is happy about that. Thank you so much for your generosity. Fantastic, he said. Great course. Okay, and the next one is four, which I, this is a good one, four Seven Springs Summer Adventure Passes. So remember, they said you can go back and forth on all these different things all day long. And the winner is Daryl Underwood of KPMG. Ooh. Okay, Daryl, are you here? Because if you're not here, that's one someone else will definitely want to have. Okay, Daryl might not be here. Okay. Uh, Daryl. Okay, I'm wait. Here. He, he's here. Ryan said he's in I'm here. Where's Daryl? Daryl, I need to see you. He's here. In, is that a word? <laughs> <laughs> I know he in here. You like that? Yeah. Hey, Daryl Underwood, are you hey, there? I'm here, Audrey. So did there you hear that you, you won something? I did. Are you excited? I am. I'm a Seven Springs uh, season pass holder. I'm, I'm all over Seven Springs. Thank okay. you, Daryl. Awesome, Daryl, thank you for being thank you for being a guest. We'll see you down here for the summer adventure passes. Sounds good, guys. That's great. Thank you. Uh -huh. Bye -bye. And then we have one overnight stay with breakfast for two. One. And that goes to Caitlin Fadgen, Pittsburgh Downtown Partnership. So That's it's so nice. here. She's here. Look, oh, exclamation yeah, point. <laughs> exclamation. <laughs> Those are the winners. Thank you both for that. Really appreciate that. So is there anything else that you think we need to know? That we well, yeah, one last thing, you know, yeah. we uh, a lot of you are familiar with, we do typically do a lot of our own festivals during the year, which had to be postponed, uh, Mud on the Mountain, uh, Ribbon okay. Wing Fest, those kind of things. So we're hopeful, we're knocking on wood, that as we head into summer, we may try some unique ones, uh, outdoor concerts. We did one last year where you could watch it from the your hotel room. Um, so you could socially distance, but you were still at a concert. Um, so we're looking at a couple of those. We're also hopeful we'll get wine fest back at the end of August. Uh, so stay tuned for more on all that. Mud on the Mountain may move to the end of September. So PTC team, get ready. We'll oh, yeah, we're ready. Mud on the Mountain. So just stay in touch with all those. So as things kind of lighten up. We will be right back into some of those fun festivals that people uh, people like. Well, listen, thank you, Eric and Jerry. Thank you so much. 
for being with us today, being good sports, staying safe, doing a little bit of a dog and pony show about the greatness of Seven Springs. I think I'm motivated. Jonathan's motivated. And I'm getting notes from, from the team at the PTC saying that they're all motivated. So really appreciate it. I want to thank everyone for joining us today. Thank you, Seven Springs, for your generosity and your partnership. It's, it's just been terrific. So Jonathan, what's up? What's cooking? Well, tomorrow, before we celebrate our one year business as usual on Wednesday with Huntington Bank and Susie Shipley, tomorrow we have Justel Mackerel Hatton from Industrial Scientific as a return guest. So much to update us on with that really cool company and the impact they have in keeping everybody safe in their work environments. Well, that's great. All right, I wanna thank again, Eric and Jerry. Thank you so much, stay safe. This was a ton of fun. Hopefully everyone got a little bit invigorated about being in the outdoors. Spring is here. Thanks everyone. Stay safe and we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. See you guys.